What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Doing the Black Art 8.1. This one is 26 years old. It was bottled in 2020. It's the newest one. The 9.1 will come out in 2021. Adam Hennett started doing these after the 4.1. The 4.1 was the most famous, in my opinion. It was the one where Jim McEwen really made his mark. Um, that was his last one. He handed Adam Hennett the recipe for the 4.1 and basically how to make the black art. Obviously, there's no indication as to what's inside these bottles. Brook Laddie is very secretive about what they put in their black art. This one was from 1994, so distilled in 1994, or at least the youngest whiskey in this bottle was distilled in 1994. Um, 26 years old, cast strength at 45.1, so a very low ABV for a cast strength whiskey. So that's very interesting to me, which suggests to me there might be older whiskey in here than 26. Now, Adam Hennett took that recipe from Jimmy McEwen, ripped it up, and decided to go his own way. After the 5.1 and the 6.1, a lot of people got scared. They were worried about the fact that Adam Hennett made a bad choice in ripping up that recipe. I don't even know if most people knew that he ripped up the recipe or that Jimmy McEwen gave him the recipe, but that's how the story goes anyway. And that's how actually Adam Hennett tells it. Um, I have a different theory as to why distillery whiskeys changed so drastically from the previous master distiller to the newer master distillers. And my theory is basically this, guys like Jim McEwen, Billy Walker, they're given a clean slate, they can do whatever they want, and they don't really listen to authority and they've got the reputation that they're not obliged to listen to that authority. Uh, a lot of times when these companies like Brook Laddie, like Glendronic, hire a new master distiller, it's because they want a little bit more control and it's going to lean toward the economic side of things as opposed to just putting out the best possible product they can. That's what gives guys like Jimmy McEwen and Billy Walker the opportunity to really shine. Okay, They just don't listen to what the economic side of things are and they just want to produce the whiskey that they really enjoy. You're seeing it again now with Glenn Alecky is just beautiful stuff. He owns that distillery and he's part owner anyway. So that's my theory as to why all these whiskeys get a little worse at first especially when they're switching over master distillers these guys are hired for a reason rachel berry adam hennett they they were hired because they know what they're doing their palates are great they can produce a great whiskey if given the opportunity to i think adam hennett comes into his own with this one this one started off a little shaky for me it was a little bit too light a little too easy to drink I'm gonna nose it, taste it, and give it a mark and let you know what I think. Beautiful nose off the hop. Something almost like a Kalila unpeated to this whiskey. We know that the Black Arts are not peated at all. This one, I would assume, is quite a bit of bourbon cask involved in the making of this whiskey. But what a great choice because there's this beautiful salted honey lemon note on the nose. Again, it started off a little too light for me, but it's really come into its own. It really, really opened up. Really nice briny notes on that. You can tell this is an Isla Scotch, despite the fact that it's not peated. Like a dark, cooked down honey as well to this. Really sweet on the nose, but you got that beautiful brininess. Nice like citrus note. Definitely more towards like lemon as opposed to orange. So no added color, unchill filtered. It's got a nice color to it. You can get all those coastal notes on the pal on the nose anyway. Really nice, really, really nice nose. On the palate. Great viscosity. 
that lemon, that honey, that salt, and then a really nice coffee bean kind of note on the back end on the finish. This is so much more complex than some of the black arts I've had recently. The 5.1 just didn't do it for me at all. 6.1, same idea. Didn't try the 7.1. I didn't buy that one. I was done with black arts, but I'm glad we tried this 8.1 because yeah, definitely better than the 5.1 and 6.1 in my opinion. There may be some sherry casks in here to round it out, but I don't think there's a whole lot. I would be very surprised if there wasn't a good portion of bourbon cask in here. Really nice, well-balanced. Honestly, kind of reminiscent of like a Balvini ton, to be honest with you. Yeah, I like that a lot. But at first I was probably only gonna give it around like an 86, 87, if I'm perfectly honest. When we opened this bottle, it was not as good as it is now, nowhere near in my opinion. Um, so like I said, originally it was gonna be an 86, 87. Now this is drinking closer to like a 90, 91. The complexity is great. That lemon note, the coffee on the back end, the honey and saltiness. Honestly, all around really, really good stuff. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's gotta be a 90. I'm gonna weigh it with all the other scores I would have given it, but this is a 90 for me. 12,000 bottles made of this, which is actually not a small amount for a 26 year old whiskey. Um, a lot of the newer 25 year olds and such are less than 5,000 bottles. This one has 12,000, so there's quite a bit to go around. It's not cheap. I believe it was like 350 bucks at the LCBO, which is probably the best global price I've seen it. Um, these are going for well over 400 bucks in most places. So 350 bucks was a steal at the LCBO. The rare opportunity to get a good price at that place. Uh, good stuff, like I said, that's a 90. I would definitely buy another bottle. I think it's excellent. I think it's worth your purchasing. Uh, check it out if you haven't already. Guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell to get notifications for when I do release a video. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and you can support this channel on Patreon. Cheers.